I just accidentally invented a new idiom, maybe? Licking a tree and hoping for maple syrup. AKA, a attempt at resolving or achieving something with less effort than is required for success, and a high probability of proving it merely futile and faintly unpleasant. I can support this as a turn of phrase. A girl in one of my classes sent out an email saying, you'll be having a furry classmate this semester, and my heart stopped. But she was talking about her service dog. Man. I like got this platoon stuck on my ceiling and I'm not able to get it down. So you're not gonna believe what object dislodged itself from the ceiling and began its descent to the floor, creating a meaty slap sound upon impact, waking me up in the tender hours of night. I can hear this and I don't like it. Vegans, just make peace with honey. No, just shut up, do it. Vegans will pretend not to hear when natives tell them their agave products are unsustainable because they have whimsical feelings about, and I cannot stress this enough, the freedom of hive insects. I mean, honey's literally murder, but go off. Okay, prove it. They literally puke their guts out to make your honey. <sighs> I'm sorry, fucking, what did you just say? I have not seen any evidence they are harmed or die in the process of production. They do regurgitate the nectar as part of the process to concentrate it into honey. It's an interesting process. But they do not suffer any injury during this process. If they did, the cost to produce honey, which is done naturally as a measure to survive over winter and through times of lower availability, would outweigh the benefits. If you kill several bees to produce enough honey to make one more bee, it makes no sense! Any animal that did that would die, even with human intervention. Do you have any sources that suggest otherwise? I'd be interested to hear of this relatively publicly available. Information was false or misunderstood. Well, okay. Bee farmers use what's called a honey maker. It's a crude device. It's similar to a meat grinder. They force the bees in and grind them up. What comes out is a paste. That paste is later filtered into what we know as honey. I'm so Oh my fucking god. What did this person just say out loud? This is- this is truly- this is the funniest thing I've ever read! Please show us pictures of your bee grinder! Okay, they might be falsely thinking about a honey extractor machine! But all these do is you place the beehive frames inside and a motor rotates it at a speed that removes the honey! Which is then tapped through a tap at the bottom! Do you- do they think they put bees in that and spin them around until they vomit? Oh shit, it's bee carnival. Bad and naughty bees get put into the bee centrifuge to extract their honey. Okay, but seriously, vegans are coming after beekeepers is one of my major teeth grinding annoyances. For many reasons. Because there's so many lies. And to go one step further because it's such a waste. You see, the strongest vegan argument is that they don't want to exploit animals or take from them without their consent. But bees consent! No, I'm not kidding! How? Beehives aren't kept on leashes. They're outside. The bees can travel miles every day. They follow their queen, who is also outside, not on a leash, and can travel miles every day. If she doesn't like the high for any reason, for example, it got too hot, too cold, too messy, too filled with sugary stuff, and they need more space. Then the queen leaves, and with her the hive. The queen stays in the hive because the hive is the best place to live, period. Done. End of. If the hive is staying with the beekeeper, it's because the keeper is doing their job correctly and keeping them happy because the bees can and do Leave bad beekeepers. Of all the animals we've domesticated as livestock, bees are the ones you can most easily argue are consenting participants in their keeping. Okay, but we are going to just ignore the fact that this absolute personification of the term bra moment believes, or at least tried to convince people, that honey is the result of putting bees in a blender! Okay, back to dumb posts. Like, Tola sucks. Today, someone at the rock gym came up to me and asked if I was the girl who fell off the bouldering wall face first into the mat and muttered, Oh fuck, I can't believe I've done this for a minute. This was not supposed to be my legacy. So I run frantically into Kroger to get ketchup before my McNuggets get cold. And as I stand at the self-checkout with only a jumbo bottle of Heinz tomato ketchup, 
everyone starts fucking laughing at me. Like, what the hell? Then I remember I'm wearing this shirt. I'm so fucking pissed off right now! You know, in hindsight, you should have checked what you were wearing. People who don't cook this cereal don't realize what they're missing out on. The heat of the flames really brings out the sweetness of the marshmallows. Okay, OP, I'm coming to your home to beat you in the face and ass. Where are the Neko curls? I need to pat their heads. We're still working on that. Then work faster, goddammit! Oh, and when that finally does happen, could I bring my cat girl girlfriend into this not pet friendly apartment? I think the real question is, should you? I think outdoor cat girls are better. Oh my god, how many times do we have to have this discussion? There's no such thing as an outdoor cat girl! Outdoor cat girls are a danger to both themselves and the environment. They have significantly shorter lifespans and disturb the ecosystem. If your cat girl wants to go outside, you accompany her. Hold your hand, or better yet, let her ride piggyback. But do not let her go outside alone. My friend let her cat girl go outside on a company once, and she disturbed a magical girl battle, throwing off the balance of the universe. Please do not let your cat girl outside. Um... Excuse me. Magical girls are an invasive species, and only free hunting by cat girls controls their population at all. Alright, listen. Introducing an apex species like cat girls into an environment to take care of an invasive species never works, because it always results in them ignoring what we intend for them to hunt in favor of easier, more accessible endemic species, like a self-insert harem anime protagonist. Like God! We saw that enough when they tried introducing rival antagonists to take care of the invasive shoujo protagonist population in Australia, and they just wound up going after a completely different species entirely! The side ponytail moms! An environment with no natural predators. Y'all really gotta do some research into the history of introducing invasive anime species into your environments, and keep your cat girls indoors, where they're safer and unable to cause environmental harm. What the fuck did I just read? Right. Am I stroking? Okay, stay out of PM Seymour's videos or draw 25. <sighs> Sully pulls the entire deck of Uno cards into my chest. You're gonna need more cards. Oh man. Oh golly. Oh lord. Oh jeez. Oh man, I sure fucked up my Skyrim so badly. Oh god. Oh god. Luigi, this isn't we! <laughs>